Hey, what's up, Warriors? It is Jeff Anderson from WarriorLife.com, and we got a good question in from one of our followers or subscribers on the YouTubes that I thought was really interesting because I just got done doing a master class on a topic of whether or not a collapse is going to happen. And short answer, yes, I do see a collapse happening. In fact, something that just happened in the news this past uh, week or so was a cyber attack onto the, uh, on the pipeline on the East Coast. And I talk about that uh, very extensively in the masterclass because we already know that foreign governments and hackers are already in our power supply, uh, our power grid and, and places like that. And they're just waiting for the right moment to switch everything off. Not conspiracy stuff. You can go ahead and, you know, it's a good thing is go watch Ted Koppel's, um, was it When the Lights Go Out? That was a really good documentary. That's not a conspiracy thing. That's like news stuff. But uh, the Pentagon already knows it. Like everybody already knows that we can have our grid shut down. And former CIA director Woolsey had said that if our power grid goes down, that isn't something that comes up long term. It's not like the lights go out like a regular power outage. If those things are down, they're down for about 18 months, up to two years because of what it takes to actually build these major transformers if they are taken out. And during that time, about 90% of the population would be dead from civil unrest, starvation, disease, and things like that. So I was really thinking a lot about this, and I got this question in from Dakota, who says, I was wondering, as a listener of your podcast and on, on the YouTube channel, would you be able to potentially talk about if things were to take a turn for the worse, would it be ideal to collect friends who are military minded and create a unit? Should you know how to clear buildings? Should you create a chain of command? Should you become a true military unit? He says, I, I know this is a loaded question, but as someone who is in the Air Force, National Guard for a year, um, I love our military and would love to continue my preparations and skills and grow my knowledge for survival and protection of my family. So the way I liken it is, is to this. The real threat when it comes to these sorts of things, it isn't that we don't have electricity. That's not the real threat. We've lived without electricity before there was electricity. The problem is other people who have become dependent upon electricity and our supply chain that's dependent upon electricity and our computers that are, are dependent upon electricity and all the systems, all 18 of our infrastructures or the other 17 with electrical being number 18, all require electricity in order to function properly. And every single city out there is basically on a three-day resupply cycle for all sorts of goods. So we've seen this in combat. I've seen cities when there is no sanitation even and the, the toilets get backed up. Like I've seen these things. What happens to people is the real threat. So I liken it like this. If you were to go to prison, let's say that you negligent homicide, something happened and you were suddenly put into prison among all of the the tattooed up felons that are in there for murder and they're just there for life, right? So how do you think that you're going to survive as just the lone wolf in there? When there are gangs of people who have learned that the way that you get through a life sentence or the next 10 years is to tattoo up, gang up, and that's your protection. That's how when you're hungry, you go to the lone wolf dude and you steal his mashed potatoes. Like when resources are low and they're finite and you have a group that might is what is going to be the strength. That is going to be what gets people through. If you are a lone wolf person there, you're toast. Everybody knows I've seen enough movies. I haven't been to prison myself yet that I know of, but we know that this is what happens. Well, it's what happens in the real world also. The reason why CIA Director Woolsey had said that 90% of the population would be dead is because we rely on electricity, but civil unrest will be so rampant and with very few supplies, it's people are going to, we are a tribe society. We will tribe up and we will go out there and do that. Now, if you went to prison, not being a member of a gang right now, most likely you're going to gang up. You're going to join a gang because you're going to learn the hard way. That's probably the way you need to go if you're going to get through your time. Same thing would go in a true collapse. We're talking about a long-term collapse from an SHTF type event. You're going to have to gang up. So, it is best to try and do that now, not create a gang, not create a, a tactical militia, but to join up with people that are of like mind. You have to be very selective. It's not just because somebody wears camo pants to you know the construction site that you work at or anything like that, or somebody said that they've got a, 
racks of AR-15s down in their bat cave basement, and they're loaded up with with survival food because frankly, the person that's out spouting all that stuff around out there is not the person you want on your team. So it's a little bit tricky to be able to go out and find the people that are uh, that will team up with you to do this, but it is better to do it ahead of time because there is strength in numbers. So if there was a true event, and I don't know when a collapse is going to happen, there are certainly lots of things that could make it happen, but it will happen someday. And when it does, the better prepared you are with gear, communication, chain of command, survival, training, all of these things with a true network, that, those are going to be the survivors. Those are going to be the survivors. Let the other ones kind of get picked off. Let them be the diversion because they're not prepared. Most people are not going to be prepared, so they're going to freak out. If you have a plan in place now and you have the strength in the numbers, you're going to be much better off. All right. So thanks to Dakota for this question. He's actually, I'm actually, Dakota, we're going to send you out a thank you gift for doing that. And if you guys want to submit a question or a tip that you have, please go ahead and go on over to warriorlifetips.com and check that out there. Go ahead and submit it. If we use yours in a podcast or on our Facebooks page and YouTubes, then we will go ahead and send you a thank you gift as well. And go ahead and leave a comment down in the, uh, the comments here with this video and let me know what you think about, should you really put together a military unit? How trained should you be? How do you go about doing it? I'd love to hear what you have to say. So go ahead and do that now. Until our next broadcast, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, and survive.